Mina sana wahayo gozaimasu. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Board Game Dojo, the YouTube channel from Japan in which we cover games from Asia. Today is the start of a brand new series that we haven't quite figured out what we're gonna call it yet, but for now, we're gonna call it Indie Spotlight, in which we go over games from small publishers or games that are self published, because especially in Japan, board game stores have a huge section or big totes full of these kinds of games that we need to sift through. Are we going to find some duds in there? Oh, for sure, definitely. But hopefully we can find some hidden treasures. And when we do, we'll be the first to know about it. For today's first episode, we are going to go over Bouquet, Flowers for You. Bouquet is a rummy style game for three to four players that plays in about 10 to 15 minutes. On a player's turn, they can do one of four actions. The first one being to play a card to start a set. The second one would be to add one card to an already existing set in front of them. The third one would be to exchange a card with another player. The fourth one, and this only happens in a three-player game, is to draw a card from the draw pile. The sets are the most important part of the game, so I will show them here. Radiation is a run of three cards or more in a row. There's also ones that are worth more points if you can do a run that is of the same suit. There's also a dome, which is a three of a kind, or if you can, a four of a kind, which will give you even more points. The other one would be the symmetry, which is two of the same exact card. Now this one doesn't give you any points, but it gives you control of the butterfly. When you have control of the butterfly, you will choose a flower from a set in front of you, and each one of those flowers in front of you at the end of the game is worth one additional point. So for example, if you choose the blue flower to be with the butterfly, then all of the blue cards in front of you are worth one additional point at the end of the game. Finally, you can always play a single card in front of you, but that's worth negative three points until you can find its pair later on in the game. Once the first player runs out of cards, the game is over. You'll tally up your points from the sets, subtract any cards left remaining in your hand, and the player with the most points wins. You can tell what the interesting mechanic was supposed to be based on the publisher's marketing statement because this game was marketed as a game of timing. Because you get to choose what cards you exchange with other people, if you play your cards too early, well now everybody knows what you need and want, so they're not going to give you that. So you should wait till later to actually play your cards, right? But mm, if you wait too long, then somebody might go out first and you'll be stuck with a lot of remaining cards in your hand, meaning lots of negative points. And this is really cool, in theory. But in practice, this just isn't the case. The strategy of holding your cards so other people don't know what you want just never wins. It's always the player that goes out first. And because of this, the game arc almost looks the same exact thing every single time. People will play the cards that they have until they can't play anything from their hand, and then they start exchanging it with other people until they finally get something that they can play. And speaking of exchanging, something weird can happen in this game. This game can break. There was this one game in which we were playing a four player game and there were six cards remaining and all of us just kept exchanging the cards with each other over and over and over again. I don't know how many times we did this until finally I stopped and said, okay, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. I cannot play any of these cards on my tableau. So let's just call it and see what's going on here because I've seen all six of these cards and I can't do anything. And sure enough, we looked at the six cards that were remaining and of those six cards, five of them weren't playable on anybody's board due to the rules, like the rule in which you can only on a set play two of the same color. The sixth card was going to be playable on one person's board, but because we knew that, we were never going to give them the card, which means that in order to have ended that game, those six cards were going to have to be played by people to lose points. We were going to have to lose points in order to make the game end. Now, if I had a nickel for every time that this happened in this game, I would have two nickels, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice. Wow, if I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? It's always tough to give kind of harsh reviews or negative reviews because I always feel like I'm missing something. They published it so clearly they saw something in this game. They had fun with this game, right? And there had to have been fun to be had. And in theory, that exists. In theory, there are multiple strategies that should work, but in reality, there's only one. 
In theory, there should be different sets worth different amount of points that offset going out first. But in reality, it's always the player that goes out first that wins because the remaining cards in the hand being negative points just offsets the difference in set points. In theory, the card exchange should be really interesting and tension filled. But in reality, every game essentially boils down to, do you have a card that you can play? Play it. Do you not? Exchange it until you do. And this exchange keeps happening until either one person decides, hey, I already know if I'm gonna win or lose, I'm just gonna lose the three points on this last card anyway. Or you just get stuck in this endless loop because nobody wants to lose three points because the final scores are gonna be something like one to three to five. So losing three points loses you the game. So you just don't want to be the one that loses the three points. <sighs> Maybe with some rebalancing or new deck makeup or some retooling of the rules, Maybe it'll be fun, but for now, this game just comes up short. But I don't want to leave here without talking about the most positive thing of the game, which is the art. I think the art has that kind of grandma's house, really charming art aesthetic. I think the art carries this game. Like I said, this is definitely the best part of the game. A rough start for the indie spotlight, but we're going to find some duds on the way. We already said that. So hopefully we find some hidden treasures later. Thank you so much for joining us today. Arigatou gozaimashita. Until next time, jannei.